Amar Shmeed, an associate consultant with the professional services team here in Dallas. Today, I'm going to show you a few examples on how you can troubleshoot access denied or unauthorized operation errors with an AWS identity and access management policy. Let's get started. Access denied and unauthorized operation errors occur when you have IAM policies or resource level permissions that are not valid. To troubleshoot such errors, we must identify the API caller and then evaluate the permissions by checking IAM policies and resource level permissions if there are any. If the error message doesn't include the caller information, then you can identify the API caller in the AWS Management Console in the upper right corner of the page. The API caller can be an IAM user role or a federated user with an IAM role. In this case, it is a federated user with an IAM role. If you are using AWS command line interface to make API calls, then you can run AWS SDS get caller identity to confirm the identity of the API caller. You can also use the AWS CLI command with debug flag to identify the source of the credentials. In this case, it is an IAM user, and the credentials are stored in a shared credentials file in the AWS directory. Now, as promised, let's take a look at a couple examples of error messages and the corresponding troubleshooting steps. In the first example, we receive an unauthorized operation error message while attempting to describe an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instance by using the AWS CLI. This error message tells us that we don't have permissions to call the Describe Instances API. To troubleshoot this error, after we identify the API caller, we'll evaluate the IAM policy attached to the API caller role or user. Let's go back to the console and navigate to the IAM console. Make sure that you log in as an admin or as someone who has permissions to view and manage IAM. As the API caller is a user, choose Users, choose User 1, and then locate and open the corresponding custom policy that's attached to the user. You can see that this policy is restricting describe instances action to the my instance one EC2 instance, which is incorrect because the describe instances action doesn't support resource level permissions. To learn more about actions, resources, and condition context keys for AWS services, see the associated Knowledge Center article. After changing the resource value, we can now describe the instances. In our second example, we received the access denied error when calling the assume role operation to assume a IAM role. This error message includes the API name, API caller, and the target resource. We must make sure that the API caller has a right access to the resources. To do that, we'll evaluate the trust policy attached with the EC2 full access role that we need to assume and the IAM policy attached to user one who is assuming the said role. Let's go back to the console and navigate to the IAM console. Make sure that you log in as an admin or as someone who has permissions to view and manage IAM. As the API caller is a user, choose Users, choose User 1, and then locate and open the corresponding custom policy attached to the user. You'll see that this policy allows assume role action on the resource EC2 full access role. Also, there is no deny effect or condition that doesn't meet the requirements on assume role action, so the policy looks good. Now, let's check the trust policy attached to the EC2 full access role and see if there's anything wrong. You'll see that the trust policy trusts the admin user, but there is no mention of user one. We can either add user one ARN as a principal, or we can add the root as a principal if we want this role to trust all IAM entities from this account. After fixing the permissions and the trust relationship, we can now assume the role. We can check if the temporary credentials that are returned are valid by exporting the credentials returned to environment variables and running the get caller identity command using this role's temporary credentials. In our third example, we have an access denied error when calling the get session token operation. This error message indicates that the get session token operation isn't supported by temporary credentials. However, if we run this command as an IAM user, then we get the temporary STS credentials. 
In a fourth example, we receive an unauthorized operation error with an encoded authorization failure message when calling the associate IAM instance profile operation. This error message returns an encoded authorization failure message, which can be decoded using decode authorization message CLI command. First, we must be sure that the CLI user has permissions to decode the authorization failure message. After the user has permission to decode authorization failure messages, run the AWS STS decode authorization message command to decode the message. When we read the output, we'll find the exact error, such as an explicit deny or incorrect resource specified in the policy, and so on. To find the discrepancy, look for an explicit deny, the principle that is denied the access, and what action is being blocked. It is also important to identify the resource and the context values such as region, service, and any other details that can help us find the root cause of the error. Here, we can see that the user one is missing the pass role permissions on instance profile role resource. Pass role permission is required to pass a role to the service to later assume the role and perform actions on your behalf. Let's go to the IAM user in the console and add pass role permissions. After we add the pass role permissions, we can now associate the IAM instance profile to the EC2 instance. And this is how you troubleshoot common access denied and unauthorized operation error messages. Always make sure that you have the right API caller making the API calls and that they have the correct IAM permissions. Also, if they have any resource level permissions, make sure that those resource level permissions are supported by the actions that you're performing. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.